Sorry, YouTube seems to be having some issues. So <laughs> oh so if you can still see me let me know um sorry about all that <laughs> so oh you're back great um so i think this is working better um <laughs> let me know if you're still there and can still see it and um so the other day i was looking for um some good examples of light and shadow and i found this group of pelicans and um i love painting pelicans i think they're they're just so, <laughs> I don't know, they make me happy. They're so silly looking. Um, I just, they don't look very aerodynamic. No, I don't know how they fly. It's it's really wonderful. Um, I don't know, a little piece of magic in the world, right? And uh, so, <laughs> Hi, welcome back. Sorry about that connection problem. I, uh, usually YouTube plays pretty nice, but every once in a while the connection, it just doesn't want to connect. So I love these guys' fluffy texture and, um, just how um, you know because they're all white there's this uh, I, know, I love I love things that are kind of monochromatic and I feel like you can really see a lot of form and anyways these guys really make me happy. <laughs> I hope you like them. So I'm just trying to sketch them in and make sure I'm happy with the layout here. Um, I really like this guy on the left. It's got most of the shadow for the whole design here. There. And I'm putting them back a little so I'm not right on them. Um, and so thank you for joining and um, I hope this is fun and distracting. And please feel invited to make comments or ask questions and I'm keeping an eye on the um, on the chat so. Um, there's about a 30 second delay, but if I see your question or your comment, I will respond. And so I also, I love this layering of, um, of all the birds.
so <laughs> this is exactly the same way I draw, you know, big design. And then just refine and refine and refine. So something kind of interesting and complicated is happening right here. Looks like I'm seeing a leg and then I'm seeing more birds on the other side of this one. So let's see, where's that? How about there? A lot of what's kind of fun about painting is um, just that puzzle feeling of when things are really complicated like this, just kind of trying to figure out what it is. And, you know, if it's, if you're painting from life, you can get up close and look and investigate. And I love that. So the rocks, so this one goes in here, and then this one, a little closer. I think that'll make the pattern more interesting. You can tell I'm not trying to think about um, color yet. I'm just using something that I'll fit in with the water well. And this guy has such a funny pose and uh, you know I contemplated this morning do I do I put them in do I leave them out no I don't want them to end at the same point so that rock can keep on going and uh, I don't know there's something about him it's just fun and uh, here he is. What's going in? I know some artists um, have certain colors they like to use for their sketching. I think a lot of people use per number, especially with portraits and things that'll have a lot of earth tones in them. Or uh, you know, some outdoor artists will use a real kind of orangey brown for landscapes, and uh, some artists like to start with the actual color, so they kind of have a sense of the color as they're going along. I just kind of choose case by case. And let's see. So do you have pelicans where you are, cars? Or or other other people who've joined. I really thought these guys were just coastal until I got here, and uh, there's this kind of lovely state park um, north of us that I went to, and there were a bunch of pelicans there that I cannot be seeing <laughs> what's what's really here. This is so cool. Okay. So for me, this distance right here is the hardest part of anything that's sort of portrait related. It's such a challenge to um, have it comfortable and also interesting. Let's 
So I'm going to wipe down this beak quite a bit so that the blue doesn't make my orange brown later on. Um, but it's, it's drying really quickly. I've, uh, It might not it might not even need too much wiping down. So if you can hear me and everything is kind of working well for being able to see, um, type a little something in the oh hi. Well thank you. Um uh, one of the Great Lakes. Oh nice. Ah, boy, the Great Lakes, I guess I've only been to touristy parts of the Great Lakes, but, oh, so gorgeous. We went, um, we went last year up to, uh, Lake Superior and, uh, it, uh, it had that vastness that the ocean has it, it, uh, it was really nice so let's see I'm seeing kind of a warmer color in the foreground and then it's going back to more of a greenish almost a teal back there and uh, I think that will really help with uh, um, with the uh, depth. So, yeah. Well, I've never been to Florida. <laughs> I, I, um, and, you know, I don't remember seeing pelicans in, in Oregon. I know I've seen them in the, on, down in California before, but Florida seems like exactly where they would want to be. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm not sure I want to be totally heavy handed with my colors here. I don't know. I'll put in some shadows and just go from there. So, this guy. It's just on the edge of the rocks. And... And so one of the things I watch out for is having things end in the same place in a way that's confusing. So making sure to get these angles kind of indicate what's happening back here. And then I'm not sure how much this rock over here actually adds. It would be really annoying to not have it there. I think this shape would be strange. I don't think it needs to be quite so low. I think that'll work out better for the composition. Just pick a little bit up. And So I'm very curious, are, are the people who've joined this morning painters or, um, or more of a 
painting enthusiasts and uh, so this is a beautiful gray <laughs> Oh, nice. Gouache. Oh, wonderful. Well, cool. Glad to have you joining me. And, um, yeah, you're always welcome to, um, you know, just back up and, and pause for, you know, if we get to the end and you're not done or you want to change things around. Um, so this house cracks me up. I don't know if you've heard me mention this before, but I had an art teacher once that, um, that said, don't mix ultramarine blue and cadmium red. It makes a horrible, pukey purple. And, um, and for some reason, instead of thinking that sounds like something I should test, <laughs> I just thought, okay, I won't do that. And, um, and then when I read a, a, a color, uh, I guess it's a color theory book called um, Yellow and Blue Don't Make Green. I think it talked about um, the the difference in, um, you know, when you mix a color like cadmium red, which is closer to orange, and a color like ultramarine blue that's closer to purple, you'll get if you mix them together, you get a purple that's more dull. And, um, and, you know, if you're looking for a more dull color, you could also mix a really bright purple and then add some yellow in. But this is kind of a cleaner way to do it. Um, and uh, I thought that was really interesting. So... But I still always think about that teacher when I <laughs> when I mix these two colors. So uh, here we go, pukey purple. But I love that color. It's very, you know, it's subtle and um, I think it's kind of beautiful. It just depends on what you're putting it next to. And you know, for her, she was an abstract painter that used all like very bright high chroma colors and so to put this purple next to that it would look kind of pukey but um you know i kind of live in the grays i um i'm much happier if i make a painting that has a lot of very subdued colors and then just a little bit of punch and um so for me it's it's wonderful So I'm just kind of trying to nail down some of these values here. Um, and seems like uh <laughs> you love muted colors. That's awesome. Yeah, me too. It's, um, it's you can appreciate um, you know artwork with different aesthetics. I think with you know that use really bright colors. I'm sure, but um, yeah, I think what really sings to each of us is kind of different. Yeah, I like the muted colors too. Okay. And that needs to be a lot lighter. Oh. 
and rare get really purpley so i've um i've been embracing my second white lately it's so funny but i'm using lots of titanium white here um but um i've been kind of embracing using my transparent white with the dark colors it really does make it easier to mix and um Yeah, because it doesn't it doesn't change it as much and it doesn't have that opaque uh, um, it doesn't turn chalky which is really nice so I'm getting the base color in here and I'll adjust as I go so the shape of this shadow is really going to say something about what that rock is doing you know if it's coming down this way or if it's just continuing on so what do i want i think i want to imply that the rock goes like this pointing at everything So later today we get to go visit my mom. We're doing the social distancing, but we're going to um, help with a couple steps of her big uh, chicken house. And uh, I'm really hoping I get to see the chickens today. <laughs> I've seen a couple photos and they're so pretty. They're fancy little birds. And uh, that's uh, I don't know, I'm not too familiar with chickens, but boy, it seems like there are a lot of different kinds. Yeah. Or at least they a lot of different looks to them. Okay, so he's got his funny little legs there. And uh, if there was more like movement or change in um, in the water around here, I would probably paint through the legs instead of instead of around them like this, but uh, I don't know all those uh, right now I'm just putting on a single color, so I'm not worried about that yet. So welcome. It looks like uh, someone new has joined. You are welcome to make comments or ask questions. And please hit the like button if you're enjoying this. And, um, and you are welcome to paint along.
trying to get the right feeling in this water and I might bring the value up a teeny bit later on but I, I want to give the pelican some room to be brighter than the water let's see and yeah, let me check. Turning this a teeny bit so that makes it easier for you guys to see. And please always let me know if you want me to change anything around. I am. Um... Oh, hey! <laughs> I got an exciting notice yesterday. Um... Oh, hello, uh, Tyann. Did I say that right? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're enjoying just watching and you know, I I started doing this just because it seems like um when I've done painting demos um I've gotten really great responses and people have said it's kind of fun and it's absorbing and I figured right now um yeah, it'd be great to kind of offer something fun and absorbing to um to the world and so I think it's great that you're <laughs> turning in and watching TN. That's lovely. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Oh, but my exciting news, um, YouTube wrote to me and told me I've had uh, 2,000 views. It's uh, my new milestone and I just think that's neat that uh, I don't know. And I didn't really think about that when I when I got started. I was just thinking, you know, um, my collectors might might find it and find it interesting. Oh, thank you so much, Deanne. Thank you. But, but. Yeah, it's it's fun it's funny when they send me the milestones and what <laughs> i love that but i never even considered it it's just so cool so i think you guys have if, if you've seen me uh paint like cows or some different things um you know sometimes i start with the the animal and then the background is kind of you know, just there to support it. And it's uh, it's not exactly an afterthought, but I do it later. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, um, but this time, because what I love about these animals is this, um, just the, the whiteness over here and then this beautiful shadow. Um, and so, I want to make sure to, I don't know, I feel like playing that off of the watercolor or the color of the water will work out well. Let's see how it goes, right? <laughs> yeah, let's turn this even more. And... So this guy, let's see, he's looking so much bigger than the other ones. And I let's see. Yeah. 
I'm gonna bring his edges in a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I am using oil paint. Um, and I'm using a medium that um, uh, it's archival oils, odorless medium, and I just really like the consistency of the paint with that particular medium and it doesn't have that uh, <laughs> that horrible smell it it does have an odor um and i do have my windows open but it doesn't uh it doesn't smell as strong as some oil mediums and so I'm just going to get a base color and then try to get that um, atmosphere and then I might work into it with a little bit of, of water texture, but this, I don't want to um, focus on that and kind of paint myself into a jam where I feel committed. Um, this guy really cracks me up. His, he's got this uh, like turkey posture here. And uh, so thank you for asking. Your questions are always appreciated and welcome. And so I think this guy will move over. Yeah. I like having a little bit of room from the edge so he's not scrunched straight up on it. I can't leave him where he is. Oh, his leg will need to move over a little bit. Okay. And this guy still seems too big. I'm gonna move his body up. And Oh, Galkin? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, nice. Ah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you for visiting. I'm assuming you heard about me from my mom's posts and uh, uh, thanks for, <laughs> for visiting. <laughs> So, this bird in the front, I I didn't draw him in, but, you know, honestly, I didn't even really see him there until just now. Um, I was looking so much at the pelicans. Hmm. Let's see. And to decide whether to leave them in or and I'll draw them in and see what it how it goes. It's kind of cute. I like all the <laughs> yeah, all the different species of birds are just hanging out together and or species, all the different types of birds. Mm. Yeah. Kind of subtle. Let's see. <laughs> I like that guy. Good morning, Johnny. <laughs> uh, 
Thank you very much. Yeah, your pelicans are wonderful. So, um, at least one of your fans is also here watching. <laughs> so that's very cool. Thank you for letting people know about me. I appreciate it. I'm going to get a little bit of the rock color in. <laughs> yeah. It, it's true. We were just talking about you <laughs> right before you showed up. That's good. So I am back to my traditional palette today. I had been using some yeah, phthalo blue and and um, a bunch of convenience colors, and I put those all off to the side. And I'm just getting back to the basics here, my five primaries, and um, that's nice. So, and I know I have a brown over there I could just grab and be pretty close for here, but I, uh, it's going to be kind of fun to mix my own today. Um, so I use, um, I use the Utrecht, um, oil paint for some of my paints and I use, um, uh, Windsor Newton for some and, um, I do most of my shopping online. So, uh, which one I use it, it, um. It really just depends on how, um, uh, you know, how I find them <laughs> in line when I'm shopping for them. Um, and um, see, most of these are the Utrecht brand um, and a couple of the more recent additions are the Windsor Newton. Ah, so cool. That's awesome. So I bet your ears are still burning, Johnny. <laughs> So my color is looking so warm next to the violet here. I'll cool it down a teeny bit. And especially going under here, I'll cool it down a little bit more. So Johnny, I was telling everyone I was hoping to see some baby chickens this morning <laughs> or early this afternoon. Uh, let's see. And let's I'll clean up my shapes a little bit. Let's see. Bring that down. So 
just a little rocky edge, so I kind of have a lot of leeway here. And I think getting some specifics of some rocks will help for a bit. And and this guy I just moved up because I didn't I didn't like how these two shapes were meeting. There. And let's see how that goes. I feel like it does need something else though. A little, little rock. <laughs> Uh, I would love to paint those chickens. Oh my gosh, I would absolutely love to. Yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, getting this on kind of dark, but I might need to adjust it later. I think this is really the darkest dark on these guys. And let's see. Until I just draw right through. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> That's the nice part of painting loosely. It's it doesn't hurt anything to just paint right through stuff. So this guy, I feel like, needs more bulk to make more sense out of this guy. And he's going to shrink a little bit, but... And if somebody can tell that these are all female pelicans and I'm... <laughs> and I'm miss, miss saying it, let me know. But uh, I'm not quite sure how you tell. Uh, this part is real interesting. Let's see. There we go. I think that'll work much better. And bring that in a little. Sometimes I feel like my paintings remain drawings. Uh, <laughs> through most of the process. Okay, so this guy, love this overlap here. And I'm just, I take liberties with where I put things. Okay. Let's see this neck. And let's see. I never really feel like I have to follow a photograph too directly. You know, if anything bothers me, I just change it. Artistic license, yes, indeed. So, Johnny, have you been making any more chick related uh, forms? See. I have uh, one of her. Uh, chicken forms here that I love so much. Right, my sculpture. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so what a bizarre beak, huh? It almost folds, but it looks very smooth in the front. It's so interesting. Okay. So I'm trying to paint really lightly since I'm going to, I don't want this to pull up into my, um, into my lighter colors. I'm just getting heavy handed because I, I haven't quite nailed it yet. Oops. This is her beautiful hair. It goes kind of straight down. Okay. And then the way they overlap is weird. I mean, uh, I think this guy needs to be bigger. There we go. So it's not like they're ending at exactly the same place. And oh, hello, welcome new people. You are welcome to um, ask questions and make comments and uh, Don't worry about, uh, you know, whether somebody else might have already asked. You're welcome to ask. So, and let me bring this down. And let's see. I'm going to start getting that back water in and then carve into this bird until it makes more sense. Okay, and I uh, heard an artist recently talking about how um, they don't use cleaners or um, or mediums, and so to clean their brush if they're going towards a lighter color like I am, they'll <laughs> clean it in the white paint. <laughs> and uh, that was interesting. So I think a lot of people end up doing that inadvertently, just, you know, if the brush isn't clean enough and you dip it in the white and, and uh, you can tell it's still kind of brownish. Yep. You do it again. <laughs> well. okay. There's this fun teal color back there. I have the feeling this will really look different on the canvas than on my palette. I'm just going to start here and sure, give it a go. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It kind of does. You know, it's... Um, yeah, so I've 
I'm starting a another project where I'll be painting lots of uh, moms and babies, but um, I did that about 11 years ago and I was specifically painting just moms with their babies. And then this time I wanted to open it up a little bit wider and have it be about parental love in general. And so, um, you know, dads and babies, but also people with their animals and just, um, you know, any of that kind of situation where somebody's, um, you know, loving their dependent. And, um, and so it's funny, you know, I, uh, looking around the studio, actually, I, I do paint that in animals a lot, like cows with their babies and things like that. And, uh, so if anybody wants to participate, um, um, you can send in a photo and if I, if I paint from it, um, I'll, uh, I'm giving a huge discount to, um, to anybody who, who wants to purchase it, but there's no obligation. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, if it goes really well, I might make, um, I don't know, some place to display them all. So it's, you know, kind of this cohesive vision about parental love. So I'm going to do some of the value shifts back here. Like especially right around his head to give that highlight the opportunity to really shine. <laughs> uh, yeah new puppies <laughs> so fun but by a whole lot of work but I think that's part of what makes you feel attached to them by the time they grow up is how much effort you put in taking care of them when they're little I don't know I've only had the one puppy, but like, um, since being an adult and, uh, I kind of felt like that, like worrying about him and taking care of him when he was little, it helped with uh, just me feeling attached. Okay. I need a big pile of paint here. Get this medium value going. I was mentioning earlier that I've been playing around with lots of uh, different colors lately, but today I just I wanted to go back to my the palette that I've used for so long with just five primaries and white and. Uh, Kind of fun, it's so familiar. I'm just getting something down here, and as long as it's kind of the right value, adjust later.
<laughs> Absolutely, it's worth it, yeah. And graying down the this area right here. doesn't look very good down that's funny but it is it's, it's the only one here with the complementary color mixtured in Get a little fun scumbling right there. I'll leave that in there. So I've been wanting to try out painting without any medium for a long time and I was just kind of struggling figuring out how to go about that and I finally got my first couple paintings without medium done and uh, it was really interesting. It wasn't different in the same way that I had expected. Um, It was kind of different in a totally, <laughs> in a totally new way, uh, but um, yeah, I think you'll be seeing more of that coming up. I I liked it a lot. Okay. I'm kind of overpainting this. I'll come back with some beak color. So I'm very curious how many of the people who've joined me this morning are artists. I know, I know at least three of you are. Are there, are there any other artists that are watching? And, uh, it is absolutely fine either way. I'm just, I'm just very curious who the audience is. I feel like they're starting to get in better proportion with each other here. I might still bring them up a teeny bit to <laughs> I love scumbling. <laughs> this line here is one of my favorite parts so far. Um 
you know, it's, it's sort of the first finished part, I should say. Okay, let's get some birds in. Um, I think since that white, hmm, especially in this guy, since it's such a clear line, I think I'm going to paint in the shadow first and then come back and paint over it with the white. This guy, maybe less so since he's so much in the light. And I'm going to put the sun right there so I remember. <laughs> and it just kind of reminds me to not do things that. Um, that would be misleading about where exactly the light's coming from. And so when I'm really squinting at the photo, the shadow, especially right here, is like the same value as the water. So cool. I love that. But it's so much warmer. I don't think I want to go full pink. But I might right over here. It's a little darker. Yeah, I'll just get the edge in. Ah, I love that color. Oh, uh, getting a good color just makes me so happy. I don't know if you get that feeling when you're mixing color and you put one down and it's the right value and you just, ah, uh, I love that. right on <laughs> well i love art appreciators i appreciate you so much and i hope this is interesting and fun thank you chris yes guys that's absolutely true artists very much appreciate art appreciators So there's just a little bit of warmth right in here. Might have to lighten that up a little. And then it cools down. And let's see. It's the same sort of color right in here between the feathers and this like, shadow. And this part of what was really throwing me about the size in relation is that um, this part here wasn't looking like all the same form, but I want to make sure it does look like all the same form in my painting. You can tell I've moved some of the birds and I've got this guy smack in the middle, but you know, it's a very centered painting. And um, so if the design was different, I would have, you know, put him off to the side, especially being the only one of his kind. But um, I really think it's fun to just plunk stuff right in the middle when it's intentional. It's... Uh, It's one of those things where it's um, 
it feels a little courageous sometimes is it um you know especially with landscape paintings and things it's uh generally not done but um, but i love to do it intentionally and okay i think a leg would really help here let's see so i've moved him forward in relation to things a little bit actually goes right back there okay and I'll brighten that up after I feel more confident with where everything is going. And that is the end of this like really warm gray. And this again is the gray that my art teacher called Pukey Gray, which is so funny. She, I don't know, it's, she probably wouldn't be, appreciate being remembered <laughs> by saying that. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so let's see. Across the body, it lightens up and then it cools down. I, I'm going to just grab half of my pile here and cool it down. And I'm going to cool it down. With a little cerulean blue, and ultramarine. And the cerulean blue and cadmium red make the grayest of the purples that I can make with two colors on this palette. And um, that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm going to lean into that. But I like a little bit of the, the specific color of the ultramarine. We'll see if this cooled down. It's nice and calm. And blue has this weird optical illusion where a lot of times it can look darker than it is. Anyways, that looks darker than I want it for sure. more my light. It's funny, this is substantially lighter on my palette. Uh, but let's see. And That's, I love these two colors. They're so subtle. This is a lot darker, but I'm going to start there. Oh, not bad. And there's a lot of variety up here. I'll start with this and then can move it this way or that. And I'm just using paint without medium now, so I can keep blending it a little bit longer. There. I'll just put the white right over it. Right on.
Right, yeah, good shadow color really makes me happy. <laughs> There's this subtle shadow here, subtle shadow there, much darker, and okay, and need that lighter area to really make this and this beautiful is what I see. It's light and it's warm. Ah, isn't that nice? <laughs> I love good colors. <laughs> okay. Um. So I just mixed a little bit of white into my warmer gray here. Still a little bit subtle. And then right along here, it's a little lighter. And especially right here. Okay, and then it gets substantially cooler. Towards the top. Isn't that fun how fast it can start to look like something? To me, at least, it seems fast. <laughs> I'm not sure if it seems very fast to you who are watching, but you know, the difference between the little sketch and then um, you know having some form, I can really go quickly. Okay. And, and this guy is, let's see, this guy is very cool. Um, let me use the same shadow and lighten it up a little bit. Pulling it down with some cerulean blue so it doesn't feel quite so purpley. Yeah. So I have gotten so many questions from people, especially who were um, doing the drawing class about um, about the pencil hold and so I did a whole video yesterday it's only two minutes long but it's uh, all the answers to the questions about the pencil hold so if if you've been curious about that or have had questions about it um, check that out it's uh, it's just my newest upload and it's in the drawing class um, or I think, what do I call them? Uh, drawing lessons section. Okay. I really, I'm trying to get away from this purpley color. I want this guy to feel separate from that guy a little bit. But also I can see there's the color of these shadows is this lovely blue. And so I've added quite a lot of cerulean blue here. And
So I'm getting rid of my lines here and then it becomes a lot more subtle how <laughs> these guys are related to each other. And over here, let's see. And a little continuity here. Ah, these feathers are so pretty. They're just so subtle. And I keep asking myself as I go along, is this something I can, you know, will I be painting over this with the water? Will I be painting over it with the highlight? And, you know, does this kind of add to how well, how well you can tell what it is or, or does it make it more difficult? Okay, so I think that's this guy's shadow. And then this guy has such a nice dark shadow. It's kind of in the same value family. But much darker. And it feels more gray. Than and this guy especially. And I'm kind of all in on this very centered design here where this um, guy in the middle has the most strong colors. And once the little spots of orange go in, I think that'll be even more accentuated. So how is this going for the people who are also painting right now or sculpting? I think I'm in the right value family, but not the right color. I feel like putting a spot of bright purple in there just for contrast. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think if I had one little spot of bright purple, this all of a sudden would look so gray. But anyways, that's what the orange is for. Okay, I've got green. <clears throat> I'm going to start over here. I'm starting with ultramarine because it's the closest color to what I'm seeing. And then I'm adding cad red and and cerulean blue because they're so far apart on the color wheel. There's one more cadmium. I'd rather it feel purple than green, so I'm Adding in a little bit more cadmium. Yep, more. And <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes just the process is the part that matters most and, you know, evaluating it takes some fun out of it. So, yeah. plunk some of this down and just see where I'm at. Oh. <laughs> there we go. A little more mixing, huh? Yeah, I, I kind of like this for um, the darkest bits. say good mix wrong spot okay that's the lid and all on here I think the rocks need to come up to meet them a little bit but Get the canvas covered since the colors aren't the values aren't too different i think from the rock and the bird so warm them up a little bit yeah these pelicans they're so fun Just, uh, such a wild animal they seem like <laughs> so different from the birds you see in the yard and okay Let's see where that is okay i like that here we go I think this will bring the form together a little bit. And And so here I don't have any medium. I, I haven't really been using any medium on the birds themselves. Let's say, uh, I really want to be able to mix in there in a in the specific way you can with when you don't have medium. And let's see. So I think it, one of the things that I love about these this uh, photo is the way the shadow is subtle and that is really showing here where it's so light up here and it has a lot of value shifts I'm kind of ignoring the seagull <laughs> trying to decide do I want him do I not want him I'm not sure how much he adds. What do you guys think? Do you like that seagull in there? Or do you think I should just paint right over him? And over here, let's see. I'm going to warm it up just a, such a small amount. Over this area. And let's see. Yeah, I'll just put the white right over it if I want that there. OK, 
Okay, and then darker shadow again. To bring it away from the greenish color turn. And get some of that down here in these rocks too. Funny, I have spent way too much time thinking about the difference between brown and gray. <laughs> and, and, so funny. It's all just the orange, right? And brown has more orange. And... Okay, so I'm going to warm up these rocks a teeny bit so they feel not like ex not like just more birds. Make it a little less confusing here. I'll go all in on the orange. Yeah, the the person I saw that was talking about how they um they just clean off their brush in the white if they're going for a, a light color. Uh, it sounds funny and wasteful <laughs> kind of to me, but uh, you know I've only had one time when I really needed to rinse off my brush in this whole painting, and uh, probably wiping it. And a towel would have done just the same. And okay, I'm going to lighten up this rock just so the bird comes forward a little bit. And oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, the girl gets to stay. I um, I love that we have seagulls here. It's it seems so strange, with no sea. <laughs> we are a long ways from any large bodies of water, but uh, we see them around town sometimes, just in store parking lots and things like that. There we go. I'm going to add there. a little balance here. And let's get this the shadow on the head is a little cooler. And a lot lighter back here. So this is a pretty 
complicated subject for today. But uh, boy, I just fell in love with these guys uh, when I was doing the drawing class. And um, like, I have to paint those guys. And just kind of changing the color of, you know, the warmth or the coolness of the distinct areas to separate them a little bit. Uh, separate the one bird from the next or the head area from the body area or the wing. And let's see. And so. All right, let's get that little guy in there. So, And a lot darker down here. And now I'm super anxious to get the the highlights on. Okay, little goal. Uh, what should we let it stand on? Let's get a little wrap in here. Uh, and wax up to the back. Get this edge a little more irregular here. And time for some orange and white. Okay. It takes a lot of patience to put the white on this late. But uh, I think it will be worth it. Kind of scumble in some feathers here. Get 
does take a lot of paint to work without medium. Okay, and this is where my little sun dot <laughs> is very helpful. Remind me. Keep it at the top. Don't get confusing. There we go. And this is where all the subtle colors of the <laughs> super thick paint. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell from, from through the camera, it's very thick. Uh, but, Okay, so and just kind of highlighting this dull with the tail feathers here. Yeah, I'm just, this guy's kind of the, the backup singer of the group here. Yeah, well, it'll be kind of loose and gestural. And, and then this guy. So um, I am just about done here. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like, subscribe if you haven't. Um, and if you are not getting my notifications about when I'm going live, um, let me know if you want to get those emails or um, I have finally chosen a, a more long-term schedule. So that's just kind of in my channel header.
and I always take requests for um, future painting topics and I'm getting some of these beautiful feathers in. And Okay. All right, a little bit of orange and <laughs> Oh, um, thank you so much, Tian. Um, I'm just reading your emails. I really enjoyed watching. Thank you. Thanks for joining. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> Muffins. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, um, I will not be leaving this to dry and going back in. I'm just doing it a la prima, just wet on wet. And um, I prefer working that way when I can. Um, I will kind of clean up and bring the water in a little bit, but, um, but I'll do that while it's still wet. And since I haven't used any mediums at all or drying agents in, my, uh, in the bird area, um, this will stay wet all day. So I can come back later on and and um you know look at it and see what it needs to feel finished um and i found that you know if you do that and if it's really hot or something or there's some reason it'll dry really fast sometimes putting it in a cardboard box and closing the top will make it so that um so that it stays wet a lot longer and, um, but I'm not really, uh, you know, I, I don't do a lot of glazing usually. Um, this image to keep working on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you, um, are you on my uh, my mailing list where you get notifications when I um, when I announce that I'm uh, painting? So I could just send out the image there if you want, or um, or I can put a link in the description. Um. <laughs> Those muffins sound good. We have to. <laughs> oh my gosh. But um yeah, I'll just put a a link to the image in the description. It'll probably take me about 10 minutes after I log off to do that. And But also the video stay up. So if you um, if you want to, um, if it's easy to look at it on the video, 
you're welcome to do that too, of course. Yeah. Okay, so this is weird, but one of my favorite color combinations is cadmium yellow and the lizard crimson. It makes this beautiful uh, like peachy color. I love it. Anytime I get to <laughs> combine those two paints, it makes me so happy. Yeah. Isn't that a gorgeous color? Just cadmium yellow and lizard crimson. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, much darker this way. This this bird really cracks me up. Just his posture here. Love that. Okay, and okay. So I'm gonna leave it there. i um. Thank you for joining, Cars, and you are so welcome. And um, <laughs> yeah, please eat one of those for me too. That sounds tasty. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll be back Tuesday morning at the same time. Um, I might do a charcoal drawing. And, um, and I am taking requests for anything people want to see. Uh, I've gotten a couple on the list and um, and you're welcome to comment below if you're watching this later and let me know what you'd be interested in, in seeing. So. Getting a little messy here. So have a great weekend.